Hello guys, <clears throat> this is the second segment of the weathering chapter uh, in physical geology. So last time I stopped at, at um, trying to explain to you the, the zeros and the decimal points and what is the meaning of 10 to the negative 7, 10 to the negative 3, and <coughs> what is the, the difference in between those numbers. So this really now takes us to the, the pH of the solution. And remember, we talked about that the pH will actually represent the, the hydrogen ion concentration, which means it's the activity of the hydrogen ion. And uh, we do use logarithmic units. And the pH basically is defined as the negative logarithm of the um, hydrogen ion concentration. Uh, when you have pure water, like really pure water, like distilled water, then in that distilled water, usually there is some water molecule which dissociate to hyd hydrogen ion and hydronium ion. The hydrogen ion is, so if I wanted to write this down, I would say H2O and it will dissociate, which means break up, and this is the way we, we show it, uh, into hyd hydrogen ion and hydronium ion, which is the OH. But not very many molecules will dissociate. So if we measure the concentration of the hydrogen ion concentration in, in pure neutral water, uh, the, the concentration of the hydrogen ion is going to be 10 to the minus 7. And the same way the concentration of the hydronium ion is also going to be 10 to the minus 7. Now, if you look at the, the logarithm, the negative logarithm of 10 to the minus 7, we actually are going to get 7. So the pure, the pure neutral water will have a pH of 7. Now, what really is interesting also, that because it's a logarithmic scale, don't forget that, uh, if the pH is 6, remember that is 1, 0 difference, which means the 6 pH 6 solution will have 10 times more hydronium, uh, hydrogen ion than a pH 7 solution. And if the pH is 5, you're going to have 100 times more hydro, uh, hydrogen ion in it than in a pH 7. So it's really easy to understand. So I'm going to go to the next slide here. Actually, I bring this up and I will draw the, the pH scale myself here. So the pH scale goes from 0 to 14. 0 to, so here is the 7. Remember, I told you the 7 is the neutral. And as you go to the left, you know, 6. And remember, 7 means 10 to the minus 7. The concentration of the hydrogen ion is 10 to the minus 7 when the pH is 7. And when it's 6, that's 10 to the minus 6. So remember, this has, the 6 will have 10 times more hydrogen than the 7. And if I set 5, just don't forget, then we're going by 2, 0 from the 7 because it's 10 to the minus 5. So therefore, it will have 100 times more hydrogen ion. If it goes down to 4, then remember, now we are, one, two, three zeros away from the, the neutral. So, so 10 to the 3 is actually a thousand times more acidic. So when you drink something which has a pH 4, you drink a thousand times more acid than if you were drinking a, a pH 7, a neutral water. When it goes down to 3, and the scary thing is that this is Coca-Cola right here. The pH of the Coca-Cola and the Mountain Dew and all those guys is 3. Then how many zeros we are away from the neutral water? Count them. Remember, this is 10 to the minus 7, 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 5, 4, 3, 10 to the minus 3. So the number of zero differences is 1, 2, 3, 4. And, you know, 1 and 4 zeros is going to give you 10 thousand times this is scary when you drink the coca-cola and you drink like five of them you not only drink a lot of sugar you also drink a lot of acid ten thousand times more than when you just drink your pure water like the deer water the deer park i mean that that's what i drink 
page of the deer park is like seven point something so it's rather in the other side which actually is the base right here so in this case the hydrogen ion concentration goes down and the hydronium ion is getting uh, more and more so this is the base side and this here is the acidic I hope that based on this uh, explanation you kind of understand what is the pH and and you know what are we talking about now I have a question what do you think about the rainwater what is the pH of the just regular rainwater we're not talking about acid rain so just the regular rain what do you think and I know a lot of my students would say that it's neutral some people would say it's six what do you think makes the rain acidic if it is if, if that's what you want it for what makes the rain acidic is the co2 remember the atmosphere has co2 in it and when the co2 reacts with the water and that's a chemical equation and some of you i know don't like it but don't worry it's simple i put down co2 which is the carbon dioxide put down the water and it's the simplest uh, equation and it's balanced like this it's going to be H2 CO3 and don't forget you got to know that this is the naturally occurring acid in the water this is naturally volcanic eruptions uh, naturally we just have carbon dioxide in the air so therefore any rainwater is not going to be neutral ever it's going to be acidic and naturally, without humans and all the acid rain we're producing, the normal rainwater will have a pH of 5.5. So that's the rain, 5.5. So therefore, because the rain itself is a so-called weak acid, uh, the rocks, even the silicates, through time will actually weather away chemically. So you have to remember, because of the naturally occurring carb, uh, uh, carbonic acid in the rain the silicate minerals slowly will be able to weather away to produce soil so this is very important to understand now I already mentioned your the coca-cola is right here now when we have acid rain and remember we talked about that with the pyrite when we went through the minerals when you have pyrite in the core which is very natural it's always there um, as the core which is FES2 I don't know if you remember FES2, the pyrite I meant, FES2. You know, that will react with the water and carbonic acid, and it will, but not, not that much the carbon carbonic acid, but also, of course, that too. Uh, when this reacts with the water, it will produce sulfuric acid. It's the H2SO4, sulfuric acid. And that is what makes the rain as acid rain. And very many times the acid rain actually can be pH 3, which is pretty, pretty acidic. That really doesn't help with the, with the plants. It's, it's making the soil very, very acidic. So that's the acid rain. But remember that this acid rain, you got the Mountain Dew, the Coca-Cola, the... Probably even the Gatorade is going to come pretty uh, low down in the... If you drink beer, which was grown on, on limestone, the HAP, I meant, was grown on limestone, can have a pH of 4.5 right here. So it's not too bad. It's better than drinking Coca-Cola or Mountain Dew, all those really, really horrible bad acids. And I will have a slide in, a, in, in the next slide is about page of different things we put in our body and we have to kind of be careful with that so i hope you understand the ph this was the main thing about it so here we are these are the different um thing um like your stomach acid can be as as low as as two on the ph scale and the the cola beer vinegar Beer is not really, beer is a bit higher and depends where the hap was grown. If it grows on silicate rocks, it could be a little bit lower, but most of the beer is 4, 4 to 4.5. See the tomatoes about 4, um, your saliva is around 
around 6 and our blood is actually about uh, 7.2 or so this is where our blood is 7.7 7. so our blood is right around here the seawater is 8.2 and our blood and the seawater both are so-called buffer solutions and I don't want to go into big explanation what is buffer solution but so you just will know Buffer solution means that it has the components which are able to neutralize acids if you put into your body or, or base if you put in your uh, body, but it has a limitation. So you cannot really abuse yourself for too long because if you keep doing the acidic stuff, it's just going to get bad after a while. So it's very, very important that you have balanced diet. And I'm just telling you, I learned it from my research is that cancers strictly growing in acidic bodies so therefore if you keep your body imbalanced and more acidic than base then you're giving it the chance for the cancer to start to grow in it so uh, one of the internal exercises are actually about this so I, I really want you to do that and make sure that you understand it someone now the seawater is the same situation if, if uh, for some reason some really a lot of acid is being dumped in it it will be able to buffer it back to back to the 8.2 and the same if you put too much base in it it will be able to buffer it back however our industry is really bad and very acidic so today the seawater is kind of losing its ability to buffer it back to 8.2 so the seawater starts to acid uh, acidify yeah I think that's how you say it acidify so it's becoming more and more acidic um, when you look at your household cleaning supplies a lot of uh, those are in the base like the oven cleaner household bleach is 13 so those have those are very very basic base uh, concentrated so that's about the pH and I have another slide here which shows you actually the distribution of the acid drain in the US and as you can see because of all the coal burning power plants in the Appalachian this area of the US is much more uh, prominently acid drain than the other uh, half of the United States so hopefully they are now not as bad as they have been uh, I know there is a lot of good filters in the chimneys of the uh, uh, coal burning power plants but when you're thinking of how do we make electricity and a lot of a lot of you say trying to say no to uranium mining in Virginia and no to a lot of other ways but but we all do want electricity so this is very important that we start thinking what part of the co country what kind of method of making electricity should we use? A lot of the people around Roanoke, Virginia actually don't even want the, the windmills up on top of Pool Mountain, which would be a perfect place for, for harvesting wind energy, which could be turned into electricity. So you have to start thinking that, hey, how many of you are willing to turn off the electricity in your house? How many of you do not want to use uh, the microwave? How many of you don't want to heat? In the winter how many of you think that I don't want to cool my house I'm good without electricity I don't need it then you can say I don't want uranium I don't want coal burning power plants and I definitely don't want um, whatever you don't want so you have to put it on the scale it's very very important to try to make balance and I'm not just talking in the US I'm talking about the world just think what's going on in China like how much horrible air pollution is happening and that's coming over what about the Japanese uh, big earthquake they have a new, uh, nuclear power plant right on the plot line you know the convergent plate boundary I mean that's silly the world has to get together we have to start thinking global global because you have to know what areas are good for what we have to start thinking as a globe not as United States not as Europe we have to start thinking as a globe so it's very important this is a good place for me to tell you this so I hope you understand that anyhow so let's go on remember the the chemical weathering had three things 
and it's been a long time ago when I first said that, but you can always go back on, or look at your notes. Remember, it was the dissolution, the hydrolysis, and the oxidation. So I was just preparing you for understanding the hydrolysis. That's why I was talking about the pH so much. So you understand what is acidity. So here we are, the hydrolysis. When we think of hydrolysis, this is the most important chemical weathering type because this is the, the one which makes actually from the silicate minerals, they slowly weather away by carbonic acid and they will actually produce clay minerals and the cations, which used to be in the silicate minerals, and some dissolved silica. So actually I have an actual, um, no I don't, I thought I did, but really I have a, um, here it just says that the autoclase feldspars will decompose into kaolinite and uh, it will relay, release potassium and silicone into the dissolution, into the solution. And biotite on the other hand will decompose into chloride uh, which is very similar to the clay and release um, iron, like bi the biotite, it will have iron and magnesium and that goes also into the solution along with the, the dis dissolved silicon. So basically we can assume that every silicate mineral, and I should ask you now a couple of them, like let's say like K-Feldspar. I just say Feld, which means K-Feldspar. Then I can put pyroxene. And I'm just gonna shorten it to K-Feldspar, pyroxene, biotite. You can say more, biotite. I just put biot. Olivin, olive. Uh, then you have uh, amphibole, remember? We had the sodium plagioclase and so on. So you can put any silicate mineral here, it doesn't matter. You add carbonic acid, the H2CO3, you should know that actually. Because that is the naturally occurring acid. And that will actually make clay. Remember the clay mineral we learned, the kaolinite, plus the cation. The cation in the K-Feldspats case is going to be potassium. If it's pyroxene, it's going to be iron and magnesium. This is how all these elements are going into the water. So your rivers and um, just groundwater will have dissolved uh, elements in it and it is because of the hydrolysis so remember this is hydrolysis that's the magnesium 2 plus and then olivin has also iron and magnesium amphibole iron and magnesium sodium plagioclase will have sodium potassium feldspar and then so all the cat all the cations are gonna come out calcium is an important one here so plus, plus, and I put it down here, it will have silicon, dissolved silicon. Silicon. So uh, it doesn't have room. So this is what we call hydrolysis. And I'm going to stop here. This is the second segment of weathering in physical geology. And I will see you in the third segment. Bye for now.